Moin Moin and welcome to Ralph's Photo Booth. Yeah, I showed you some uh, videos for the Nikon D610, D600, uh, D7100 and DF. Um, one of the videos was for the uh, autofocus setting. Today I want to show you a little bit shorter video about some of the functions of the uh, Nikon D610. Most of the things you will find in the manual, but um, I think some of you are photographers um, who want to see this in a video and um, it may help you to find, uh, to find out some of the um, important functions of the 610. First of all, we have two dials at the camera, one of the back side and one of the front side. And usually in most of the settings, they have two different functions. So if you um, go to the, uh, if you press the info button and then press the ISO setting, button you will see that the front dial changes between auto ISO and uh, ISO value, the normal value and on the back side you change the setting of the ISO value. So you see you can change here the setting up to uh, the high 2 and uh, down to uh, low 1 so that's 50 ISO and on the front dial you change the setting between auto ISO and normal ISO. Same for quality. If you press the quality button, you change on the front dial the setting uh, low, medium, and uh, large, medium, and small. Sorry, large, medium, and small. And on the back dial, you change between fine JPEG, normal JPEG, basic JPEG, raw and fine, raw, normal, raw, ba raw basic, and raw. So that's very easy to change. One thing you should know, you have the uh, front, uh, the, the back display and you have also the uh, um, a top display. You can illuminate it with this, uh, with, uh, with a dial here on the, on the shutter release button, the on off switch. You can illuminate it and you will also see the, um, you will also see the settings or the changes on the uh, top panel, so if you press the uh, if you press the um, ISO button, oops, sorry, if you press oh I'm on live view, have to go out of live view. So if you press the uh, ISO button, you will see you have the ISO sign here, and you can change it between auto ISO and the value. Same for the um, for the uh, quality. If you press the quality, oops, I'm coming always in the live view mode. Um, same for the quality, you can change it with the two dials. So you have the most important informations also on uh, the top display of the camera. You don't have to go on the uh, back panel, but um, it's a little bit nicer because you have the, the, the large view of all the settings. Um, next point is the um, picture control configuration. I have to change it. Um, just give me a second. I have to change um, the menu in uh, English, not German again. So here we are in English. So if you press the uh, picture control button, you see you have the different settings, standard, neutral, vivid and monochrome. Um, with a press on the button on this side, you see you have the different individual settings, sharpening, contours, brightness, saturation and hue. And if you go to the um, black and white setting, monochrome, um, there's something very interesting because in the uh, monochrome you have not only sharpening, contrast and brightness, but you have filter effects and the filter effects going from green, red, orange to yellow and off. Um, when do you use them? Yellow, orange and red for uh, landscape uh, photography, blue sky, white clouds. Um, if you use orange or red, the, the blue sky gets a real uh, black color in the black and white picture and the monochrome picture um, in orange too. Not so good, but a little bit um, less than in red. Uh, and the uh, green filter is for portrait. If you take a portrait, um, use the green filter because the skin of the of the face um, is very good than in black and white. So it's a very natural looking skin. If you use the uh, green filter, if you use other filters, the skin may be a little bit too dark or too um, bright in uh, different settings. So use a green filter if you take a portrait in monochrome. 
Uh, next one is toning and here we have the different settings sepia, uh, red and so on and you can set it individually in the uh, um, grade from I think from one up to seven so you have the toning too so that's a real nice feature in the set picture control and the picture control settings um, if you want to uh, make a bracketing, some of you may search for a bracketing function of the D600 turn. Yes, there's a bracketing function and the button is here, BK, BKT bracketing. So if you press the uh, bracketing button, um, you will see on the back side, on the front dial, we have um, the different aperture, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 1. 2.0 or 3.0 and on the back dial you have the different settings three pictures with uh, three and usually you have three pictures with uh, one f stop or you can go to two pictures down or two f stops up or two f stops down and two f stops up and you can set it if you want to have it from two um, uh, 0.3 to up to uh, three f stops to switch it off, just dial the dial as long as off is in the um, display, then the bracketing fun function is off. Next point is the um, aperture correction. That's the button here on top. If you press the button here on top, you can make a correction like this one. Just turn the dial and you have the different values. And exactly the same is for flash. Just if you press the flash button, the flash pops out. And then again, press the button, the flash button again. And on the front dial, you have the correction. And on the back dial, you have the different flash settings. So that's very easy. Just press the button and you're in the different flash settings. So it's always the same when you when you work with the Nikon camera um, press the button turn the dials look for the setting and that's it exactly the same that's what I showed you in my long uh, app patch uh, autofocus settings video exactly the same when you go to the autofocus it's not only a lever it's a button so if you press the button um, you will see you can make the different autofocus setting from autofocus uh, in the out of focus single mode or the out of focus continuous single and out of focus automatic mode and you see we have here the uh, different settings in out of focus continuous when we turn the front dial so that's always the same um, press the button and you have one function on the front dial and one function on the back dial on top of the camera we have the different settings for the continuous shooting so if you press the um, button here just a little bit difficult in in this way okay here we are you have uh, single continuous low continuous high quite con quite continuous self timer and MUP mirror up this means mirror up so if you take macro photography uh, where the camera has to um, stay very firm um, you uh, uh, move the mirror up before you take the picture so if you press the button and map mirror goes up and on the next time the picture is taken um, for sure you should use a cable release or a remote um, because if you press the button here with a finger you get a shaking on the camera and it's uh, contraproductive um, against the mirror up mode. You can make um, individual setting of the continuous low function in the menu. So just go into the menu, go to the individual setting and here we have shooting and in the shooting we have the CL mode shooting speed. Here we are, we can change between 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 frames per second in the CL continuous low mode. Um, again, in the shooting, in, in the, in the uh, individual custom setting menu, you have lots of settings. Some of the settings I showed you, the autofocus settings I showed you just before in my autofocus videos. One of the most important is the priority selection, uh, release or focus priority. Um, you have the number of focus points, 
39 or 11. Um, you have different ISO settings. So this, the, the, um, the individual menu is very, very important to know. There are lots of settings you should know and lots of settings you should individualize your camera with. Um, so go through it and have a look at it and, and uh, check the different functions you may need or um, which are interesting. Here you have the different flash settings. So you can use the uh, internal flash to uh, fire up um, um, external flashes, like two or three external flashes from Nikon. Um, so you can, uh, can make nice um, scenes with um, two or three flashes. And this one is the main flash or the master flash. Um, you have the different buttons, the FN buttons you can set. A little bit easier way to set the FN button is press the info button, press it the second time and you have here the AELAFL button which you can set, press the OK button and here we have the different settings for AELAFL button. This is the one here um, on the back side of the camera. Um, you see we have the different settings of, the, of this button and again we have also the different settings of the um, function button that's the one in front of the camera and we have a setting also for the preview button again if you want to use the fn button just press it and you will see we have the different settings here which you can choose from um, if you uh, go for the um, image bu size button if you press it you will see you can change from full frame to APS-C and with, a more with one more you go up to, uh, um, to the smaller format 16 megapixel 2433. Um, usually when you use um, APS-C uh, lenses like the one I have here, that's a DX lens, you see here we have a DX lens the 18-205, the camera changes automatically. You can uh, um, select this in the setting. Usually the camera changes automatically to the smaller, to the APS-C format from FX to DX. So now if you press the uh, live view button, you will see you don't, have, you don't have black corners or something like that because the camera changes automatically to the small um, DX format from the full frame to the DX format. Um, yes, what else do we have? What's important? Yes, if we go to the playback mode, um, some of you may wonder how to change from this view to the um, more informative view here. That's very easy. Just press the button down and you change toggle between the um, full format view and the individual view where you see the different settings um, of the picture. And even if the dial is locked, you see here it's on L locked, you can, oops, you can change before uh, between the different displays because the uh, lock is only for um, taking or for shooting and not for um, replay. If you're in this mode, you can go in the magnification and you will see here we are in the magnification. And one good thing is if you are like a still photographer um, who make um, still life or something like that, or if you're um, uh, taking portraits in the same position, you can um, go further with just by dialing uh, the back dial, turning the back dial and um, the area for the magnification is exactly the same. So even if you go to the next picture, you will see the, the area which is magnified is exactly the same. So you compare if you're going, uh, if you have a shooting from the tripod, uh, still live um, uh, flowers or something like that, and you change the, the um, focus a little bit, work with manual focus, so you can skip between the pictures and see how the sharpness is in the individual picture and can compare it very fast and very easy and select so the best picture so that's a very easy way to check it on the um, camera next point if you are in the in the replay mode is um, the um, button here so you get an overview of all pictures you have done and you can select the picture you want to see just press the OK button and here we are in the picture and that's it again plus button and you get the magnification that's it, very easy, and move with the four-way dial to the different settings. 
Forward dial is locked, as I said before, in photography mode or in shooting mode. So if you press the info button and you have a single out of focus field and the uh, four way button is on lock, you see nothing happens. There is no work on the, on the button. You just have to release it, put it from L to normal function, and then you see, then you can move the, um, um, the out of focus area here with the four way button and you can use it for the, uh, different configurations of the camera. So um, if you're wondering why your four-wheel button isn't work, just look if it's um, uh, on L and this means locked. Um, one thing if you are using the uh, manual focus, it's exactly the same like in the replay. You go to manual, you put um, live view on and then press the magnification button and you see you're just in the magnification then you can move the the focus field on a place you want to have it like here and turn the dial uh, turn the focus dial on the lens and um, get the picture sharp so here we are press the plus button again and you get more and more into the picture press the minus button and you go out of the picture. So that's the option for the live view. I like this one very much when I make a still shooting or when I take pictures of my cameras for my internet blog. Um, I work from a tripod, put the camera, set the camera up on the tripod, um, put it on the on the scene, on the whole scene, and then I work manually with the uh, manual focus. So I have a real, real good control um, of the sharpness and of the picture. Um, yeah, what else do we have? We have the live view. Here we change between um, photography and video mode. You see in the video mode you have the 16 to 9 format with 1920 to 1080 pictures, full HD mode, back to uh, photography mode. Um, here we have the trash button menu. Um, yeah, so these are the most important things. Um, yeah, one thing if you if you're in the in the um, in the info mode, you just go out. So you have seen we have here if you if you press the info button in the live view mode, we have the different settings. You have the grid. You have the three D level meter, and you see it works like this. It's very nice. You have the three D level meter. Just press the info button, and you're in the different. In the different settings. If you're out of the um, live view mode, just press the info button. And again, you're in the individual settings of the most important things here. Um, we have the um, FN button, vignette control, uh, active D lightning, high ISO noise reduction, movie setting, and then we have the uh, different settings for the SD cards. You know, you have two SD card slots and you can set it to overflow, backup or raw on slot one, JPEG on slot two. So that's a very nice feature. Um, next point is long exposure, noise reduction and remote control mode. And um, the, what I said before, the AEL, AFL button, that's the one here on top of the camera. Um, yeah, so I think these are the most important things. As I said before, go into the menu. In the menu you will find a lot of functions uh, which are very useful. Learn the functions, try the functions, because only if you know your camera, only if you know how to work with your camera, um, you will get best pictures. Otherwise, um, you may be disappointed because um, it's not the fault of the camera, mostly it's the fault of the guy who stands behind the camera. So know your camera, learn your camera, work with the different lenses you have, look for the depths of field of the different lenses. So you learn to work with your camera, that's very, very important. Control your pictures on the computer, check it for the picture quality. Um, check for the noise reduction, how good this will work and how you are satisfied with the noise reduction. Make the different settings of the noise reduction. Um, make the different settings of the picture control. It's very important to see how the picture control works on your pictures. You have the chance to get up sharpness, contrast, brightness, saturation, so you can individualize all the settings and that's very very important um, because it's very individual the the how, how um, you look to the pictures and um, 
Next point in the custom setting, what I said before, it's very important to know all the settings because only if you know your settings and only if you know how to work with your camera, will be, you will be satisfied. For such a camera, even for the D7100, it's not worth to put it in a in a closet and let it there for like uh, two or three months and then when you are go going out for holiday, take the camera. Um, this is a so complex camera and the menu is complex and everything is, is real uh, advanced. Um, so when you when you leave the camera uh, uh, three months in your closet or in your in your uh, in the in the in anywhere else in your camera bag and don't use it um, after three months you won't know all the function you won't know how to work with the camera and uh, mostly um, I think you're disappointed when you go on holidays and want to come back with perfect nice pictures um, most important thing work with your camera. Uh, take pictures, take a lot of pictures, try every function, try the different functions, um, compare the pictures on the on the computer, um, check the quality of the pictures and that's the thing you will learn your camera and you will work perfectly with your camera. That's one of the most important things. Um, you don't have to use uh, films, so it's not expensive to take 100 or 200 pictures and compare them and check for the quality, especially depths of field. Um, the full frame camera has a smaller depth of field than, than your old compact camera or a system camera with a small sensor. So that's very important to know, otherwise you come back and uh, you have a lot of unsharp pictures or pictures where the sharpness is only in a very small area and the rest is unsharp and um, you're not satisfied. So work, work, work with the camera, that's very important. One thing, if, you're, if you don't want to work with, uh, with uh, aperture and shutter speed, there's almost the option to work in the scene mode and uh, if you wonder how to change between the different settings of the scene mode, it's very easy. Just turn the dial and the wonder is, oh, I have to press the button and the, and the wonder is you will see there are the different settings of the scene mode. So that's very easy to change between the scene modes. Um, I know there are a lot of guys outside who don't know how to change and then they turn the dial and so on. So that's very easy. Um, just turn the dial and you're in the different settings and if you're uh, if you don't like to do anything just go to the green mode and the green mode the camera does everything for you um, but don't wonder if you want to change settings in the green mode most of them um, uh, you can change because the camera makes all the settings by herself so if you want to change the ISO mode um, and if you press the ISO button in the green mode you only can change from nothing to nothing because the camera makes the setting by herself. So that's the idea of the green mode. Um, uh, the green mode is really the, the, the one where you don't have to care about anything. The camera does everything for you. For you. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my small tutorial about the D610. So uh, today it was not so in deep uh, tutorial, a little bit overview of the camera, most of the functions you will find in the menu. But I think in a video it's a little bit more um, entertaining. So um, hope you had hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Come back on my YouTube channel. There are much more videos coming up in the next days. And um, yeah, have fun, go out with your camera, take a lot of pictures, and till now I say moin moin.